Could you wait a minute? I've just got to examine this. Right, all yours. I am Marie Curie. My discoveries, made over a hundred years ago, changed my world. And yours too. Sorry, this might not be an altogether happy story. I loved my work, and it helped a lot of people. But science can't help you see into the future, except in stories. And things, they can go wrong. This is our house in Warsaw, in a country called Poland. I am the youngest girl in my family of five children. And even as a tiny tot, I was super brainy. Yep, that's me here in the cot. Specs on my nose and nose in a book. Mind you, we're all pretty smart. Bronja is playing the violin. Joseph is doing extra homework for fun. And the others are playing chess. Maybe it's because my mum's a teacher and my dad too. And we live in a school. So you're learning all the time. Now, where am I in this one? Look for yourself. I'm still too young to go to class, so I'm watching from out of the window. Once I got going at school, I found it easy peasy. I always seem to get 10 out of 10 and win first prize, without even trying. But I was brought up in a school, remember? But when I was still a small girl, my poor mum became very ill, and the doctors couldn't save her. She died, and my poor father was left to look after all five of us children. After my mother died, life at home was sad and difficult. We were pretty poor, but I do remember, after I had finished school, one wonderful summer. I was sent out to the countryside to stay with my cousins. The first time I had been out of the big grey city of Warsaw. And for the first time at 16 years old, I realized how much I loved being away from the city. The sunshine, the animals and the flowers. But after that wonderful holiday, I wanted to go back to learning. I love finding out about things. So I went off to the University of Warsaw in our city. But guess what? They didn't allow girls. Please go away, you lady. Girls were meant to cook and clean, even if they were clever like me. Only boys were allowed to study hard. But we knew that there was a place where girls were allowed to be taught, and that was in Paris, the biggest city in France, a long way from our country, Poland. But we needed money for that. My sister Bronja and I hatched a plan. You go off to Paris, Bronja, and I will get a job as a teacher and send you money to pay. And then later, you can pay for me. Good idea, she said. While Bronja set off for Paris, I did the hard bit first. <laughs> I became a live-in teacher in the Polish countryside to some spoiled, naughty children who didn't want to learn anything. I stayed there for five years, waiting for my day to come. Finally, my turn came, and I got on the train to Paris. It was an awful journey. Four days long, and squashed up against the window with nowhere to sit down. Phew! I was hot and tired when I got off the train, but happy to finally be in Paris. I didn't have much money on me, so I had to live in a very small, cold flat at the top of thousands of stairs, with no light, lots of leaks, and not much water. I couldn't afford much food, so do you know what I lived on? Bread, butter, and tea. That's it. Gets a bit boring after a while. But I didn't care about all that. I was learning about science at the university. And I needed a laboratory to do experiments, huh? One day, I met another scientist called Pierre Curie, who said I could share his laboratory. Great! Here I am, arriving with all my stuff at Pierre's lab. Well, are you surprised to see what happened next? Pierre is a scientist, I am a scientist, we both love science and each other. So it wasn't long before we got married. 
and then along came Irene and Eve. When Pierre and I started studying together, the big new discovery was X-rays, rays that would help doctors see the bones through your skin. Maybe you've had one. It was a time when scientists were discovering that there were lots of types of invisible rays that came from certain rocks. Why? we wondered. What exactly was this stuff, and how could it be useful? We decided to find out. But getting at this glowing stuff was jolly difficult because it was all mixed up within the rocks. So Pierre and I spent all day, every day, in our lab, melting down and boiling up cauldrons of rock and filtering the runny goo until, after four years, we managed to sift out some funny little bluey-green lamps. They felt warm to the touch, and they glowed too. Well... I thought this weird glowing stuff was totally cool. I called it radium because of the rays it shines out. And I kept a little pot of radium next to my bed so that I could see it glow. And everyone else, not just we scientists, got very excited about this brand new stuff too. It was put into toothpaste to help people's teeth shine and into face creams too, to make your skin glow. It was knitted into baby jackets for its warmth and woven into clothes for its gleam. Oh yes, it was put into watches and inside aeroplane cockpits so that the pilot could read the dials at night. But the most useful thing by far about this strange glowing radium is that doctors could use it to kill off nasty cancer cells which make people very ill indeed. Using these rays would save thousands of lives. They are still used today. <sighs> But our new discovery could make people very ill as well as helping them get better. When we discovered radium, everyone thought it was wonderful. But what we didn't know then is how dangerous its rays can be. We both often had to stay in bed because we were ill. But we didn't know why. The radium burned our hands and fingers. We didn't think it was serious. Nowadays, Everyone knows how dangerous all types of radioactivity can be. We just didn't then, that's all. Have you ever seen one of those award ceremonies? Well, I also won awards. Special ones for scientists called the Nobel Prize for discovering this amazing stuff called radium. In fact, I won two Nobel Prizes, the first person ever to win two, and the first woman to win any. I was as famous as a film star. Watch out! Watch out! <laughs> Just as there was a good side and a bad side to my work, there was a good side and a bad side to my life. Pierre, crossed the road in Paris one day without looking properly and a big heavy horse and carriage ran him over and he died. My heart broke in two. He was my partner at work as well as my dear husband. Now my daughters had no father. We were sad for a very long time. But instead of crying at home after Pierre died, I threw myself back into my work. Soldiers were fighting in the war in France, and I wanted to help. Do you know what I did? I used everything I knew about radioactive rays to make lots of X-ray machines. I loaded these into vans, and I drove off to the battlefield taking my daughters with me. My machines could look 
into the bodies of the wounded soldiers and find out what was broken. And then the doctors could make them better. X-rays helped mend a lot of broken soldiers. I, Marie Curie, died at 67 years old in France and was buried next to my beloved husband, Pierre. I was the first woman to break into the man's world of science and my discoveries changed the modern world forever. And although I wanted my science to help people, I didn't realize, I couldn't realize, that it might put them in danger too. Marie Curie, this is my story.